I'm John Reed, um, and this is the dial in. It's an instrument that I uh, built. I became interested in this idea of dividing strings to hear both sides. So this is an instrument with two sound bridges, two hurdy-gurdy wheels, one neck in between two acoustic bodies. And uh, when one spins this crank over here, one can sound both sides of the string. Here we are, more or less in the middle. started doing this as an exploration of a fairly simple concept was that the instrument had its own music theory in it already and it wasn't what I thought it was. I'm neither a musician nor a music theorist but I am a good tool maker and I made this instrument and I, I got very interested in the, in the sounds, the relationship. I also built another instrument and I'll show it to you. The interface is a little bit different. Um, this handle here um, fits in the palm of my hand when I hold a pick. And then when I move it, you can see that pick goes up and down this way as well. So. And then I have frets, but I often play this one with a slide for better sound quality. sides of the string, so I have these kind of single neck, double bodied instruments. Um, if you take a string and uh, tune it to some note, divide the string, and you could have two notes on either side of that as you move your divider back and forth, uh, your metal guitar slide, whatever, you get two notes. They have an absolute relationship between the two notes. Um, though I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Um, <laughs> it's, um, there's an absolute relationship between those notes, and one might say that our musical theory, our notes, our scales, our octaves are based on that, um, and what this instrument does is make it easy to explore it. Um, that's really it in a nutshell, and then I'm going to show you this thing, it's going to look very complicated, but what it really does is it simulates divided strings, okay? That said, I'm going to show you the screen and take a look at it, so here we go. Um, the Diano um, that we see here is divided into a number of components. On the top is the incoming MIDI and things like that. This bank here represents a group of strings, and these things in the middle are the dividers. We could, uh, we can control the number of strings. I'm going to change it to one real quick here. And even though this doesn't look like one string, it represents one string with this as the divider. And I can move it back and forth. Here it is right in the middle, more or less. And uh, the notes. Ooh, that's low. So there's the notes that we're 
dividing, and you'll see if I change it. And somewhere around uh, 7.5. It's uh, one string's three times longer than the other, so, oops, not an octave. Well, you get the idea. It, we, we hit a harmonic there. Um, uh, I don't usually work with one string, though it does have its uses. So this is the string bank over here, and uh, we'll uh, just listen to those tones. Over here, we have the sort of tuning bank, and these are ways that you might go about tuning your strings. So it's at 100 hertz right now, the initial string, which is divided, so it's higher. Now they're both higher, both higher still, both higher still. So this just tunes the entire string. This entire string is getting tuned up and down. Um, I'll set it back to 100 because, oops, okay, 111. I can go with that. Um, and then this again runs the divider up and down here. Um, let's pull our other strings back here. I, I can do up to 16 strings, which I um, just sort of felt like was my mental limit. So here's uh, all 16 strings here. And you can see over here, it lists the frequency that we're putting out. And over here, you see the frequency of the initial string. Um, this is a very, very flexible interface. You can move um, quite quickly with it and be very free with it, though the result is often gibberish. So there we go. Um, 